Hello, beautiful friends of Bookish Fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm glad that you are here. Today we are here to talk about some of the new releases that are coming out in the month of October. In order to reduce overlap in content as much as possible, I've actually made the decision that going forward with these new release videos, I'm not going to include any of the books that I discussed in my book of the month prediction videos, because in those prediction videos, those are also entirely focused on releases coming out in the month in question. The only difference between the new release videos and the book of the month prediction videos is that the books that I feature in the prediction videos are solely chosen based on the likelihood of them being featured as book of the month selections, whereas the new release videos are entirely focused on books that are on my radar or books that I think you would want to have on your radar. And there is typically overlap between those two videos, not necessarily a ton of overlap, but there is some. And so to completely eliminate that, all of the books that I'm going to talk to you about today were not featured in that October book of the month prediction video. So if you are interested in potentially learning about some additional new releases, please feel free to check out that prediction video, which I will be sure to link down below for you. Another added benefit of not including any of the book of the month predictions in this video is the fact that I will also be able to include some additional new releases that I might not have featured for for the sake of time and length. So this also increases my ability to bring new releases to your attention. As always with these videos, this is not meant to be a comprehensive list. Like I just said, this is meant to be books that are currently on my radar or books that I think you would like to have on your radar. I will be reading a brief blurb or synopsis of the story to give you an idea of what they are about. So you can make the educated decision on whether or not you would like to add them to your TBR. As always, we are going in chronological order, starting with the very first Tuesday release date in October, which is the third. And I'm starting off this video with a bang because this is potentially one of the biggest and most popular releases that is coming out in October, and that is Ashley Winstead's newest release, Midnight is the Darkest Hour. I'm very nervous about this book, to be honest with you, because I absolutely loved In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, but I did not love The Last Housewife. That book was pretty disappointing to me, and I don't know if it was because of my expectations or because I felt a lot of pressure going in because it was super popular. So I'm kind of going into this one trepidatiously. But I do love the fact that this is considered a gothic southern thriller. I love gothic stories, and I love especially thrillers that are set in the South because I do live here in the South, and I feel that they can be very atmospheric. So let's see what it says. In her small hometown, librarian Ruth Cornier has always felt like an outsider, even as her beloved father rains fire and brimstone warnings from the pulpit at Holy Fire Baptist. Unfortunately for Ruth, the only thing the townspeople fear more than God and the devil are the myths that haunt the area, like the story of a low man, a vampiric figure said to steal into sinners' bedrooms and kill them on moonless nights. When a skull is found deep in the swamp next to mysterious carved symbols, Bottom Springs is thrown into uproar, and Ruth realizes only she and Everett, an old friend with a dark past, have the power to comb the town's secret underbelly in search of true evil. A dark and powerful novel like fans have come to expect from Ashley Winstead. Midnight is the Darkest Hour is an examination of the ways we've come to expect love, religion, and stories to save us, the lengths we have to go in order to take back power, and the monstrous work of being a girl in this world. So it absolutely sounds phenomenal on the outset. I am still really excited about it, but I'm gonna have to go in and see how I feel. But again, this one is coming out on the 3rd, and I know a lot of people are really, really anticipating this story. Also coming out on October 3rd is Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. From what I understand, this is set within the world of her kingdom of the Wicked series. However, it is completely separate from the events of that series, so this could be read on its own. You don't necessarily have to read the first three books in that series. According to Amazon, this is apparently her adult debut, but I'm going to argue and say that the Kingdom of the Wicked series was adult. It was certainly new adult, if nothing else. It definitely wasn't young adult, especially as you get to that third book, which is definitely very explicit. This is certainly going to be her very first standalone. This follows the Prince of Envy, which is one of the seven princes of hell. In the first three books, you're following Prince Wrath, and so in this, you're going to follow the Prince of Envy. It says the Prince of Envy has never claimed to be a saint, but when a cryptic note arrives signaling the beginning of a deadly game, he knows it will take more than a hint of sin to win and save his failing demon court. Riddles, hex, objects, anonymous players, nothing will stand in his way, though none of his meticulous plans prepare him for her, the frustrating artist who ignites his sin like no other. The trouble with scoundrels and blackguards is that they haven't a modicum of honor. In fact, Miss Camilla Antonius learns after one desperate mistake allows Waverly Green's most notorious rake to blackmail her. To avoid a ruinous scandal, Camilla is forced to enter a devil's bargain with Envy, little expecting his game will awaken her true nature. Together, Envy and Camilla must embark on a perilous journey through the underworld from glittering demon courts to the sultry vampire realm and beyond while trying to avoid the most dangerous trap of all, falling in love. So if you have enjoyed the Kingdom of the Wicked series, you will definitely probably want to go ahead and pick this up. But like I said, you do not need to have read that series in order to enjoy this one as it is considered a standalone. Also on the third, we have The Intern by Michelle Campbell. This is one that you may have seen already going around quite a bit because it was actually a featured book of the month selection for September's book of the month box. But this definitely sounds like it's going to be, if it's not 
not a legal thriller, a thriller surrounding people in the legal field. And it actually sounded really intriguing to me. So I did go ahead and pick this up. It says Madison Rivera lands the internship of a lifetime working for Judge Catherine Conroy. But Madison has a secret that could destroy her career. Her troubled younger brother, Danny, has been arrested and Conroy is the judge on his case. When Danny goes missing after accusing the judge of corruption, Madison's quest for answers brings her deep into the judge's glamorous world. Is Catherine Conroy a mentor, a victim, or a criminal? Is she trying to help Madison or use her as a pawn? And why is somebody trying to kill her? As the two women circle each other in a dangerous cat and mouse game, will they save each other or will trail leave one of them dead? So that sounds absolutely fantastic, intense. I am certainly down for this. I will certainly be on the lookout for the audiobook once this book is actually released because I'm excited to go ahead and read it. So if that sounds interesting to you, again, this is another one that comes out on the 3rd of October. On the 3rd, we have a horror coming out called A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. And from my understanding, this is supposed to be kind of a retelling of The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, which I didn't love, but I have certainly loved a lot of the television and movie adaptations of the story. So I am intrigued enough to go ahead and see what this one is all about. This says that this is actually the first ever authorized novel to return to the world of Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House, a suspenseful contemporary and terrifying story of longing and isolation. Holly Sherwin has been a struggling playwright for years, but now after receiving a grant to develop her play, The Witch of Edmonton, she may finally be close to her big break. All she needs is time and space to bring her vision to life. When she stumbles across Hill House on a weekend getaway upstate, she is immediately taken by the ornate, if crumbling, gothic mansion. It's enormous, old, and ever so eerie, the perfect place to develop and rehearse her play. Despite her own hesitations, Holly's girlfriend, Nisa, agrees to join Holly in renting the house out for a month, and soon a troop of actors, each with ghosts of their own, arrive. Yet as they settle in, the house's peculiarities are made known. Strange creatures stalk the grounds, disturbing sounds echo throughout the halls, and time itself seems to shift. All too soon, Holly and her friends find themselves at odds, not with just one another, but with the house itself. It seems something has been waiting in Hill House all of these years, and it no longer intends to walk alone. Would I be willing to give that a try, knowing that it's not actually The Haunting on Hill House, that it's a more modern retelling of it? I probably would, just because I think it would work a little bit better for me. I just found The Haunting of Hill House to be very abstract. I had a hard time following some of the things that were going on, and it just didn't work for me overall. So this one might be one that I would be willing to revisit, but if you did like The Haunting of Hill House, if this sounds interesting to you, keep your eye out for it on the third. We have an interesting fantasy coming out on the third called The Hurricane Wars by Fia Guanzon. This is actually one that I considered featuring in the Book of the Month predictions videos, but I didn't. This says, all Taliesin has ever known is the Hurricane Wars. Growing up an orphan in a nation under siege by the ruthless Night Emperor, Taliesin has found her family among the soldiers who fight for freedom, but she is hiding a deadly secret. Light magic courses through her veins, a blazing power believed to have been wiped out years ago that can cut through the Night Empire's shadow. So already I can see kind of like a chosen one trip going on here. Prince Alaric, the Emperor's only son and heir, has been forged into a weapon by his father. Tasked with obliterating any threats to the Night Empire's rule, with the strength of his armies and mighty shadow magic, Alaric has never been bested. That is until he sees Taliesin burning brightly on the battlefield with the magic that killed his grandfather, turned his father into a monster, and ignited the Hurricane Wars. In a clash of light and dark, their powers merge and create a force, the likes of which has never been seen. Taliesin and Alaric both know this war can only end with them, but a greater threat is coming, and the strange new magic they can create together could be the only way to overcome it. Thrust into an uneasy alliance, they will confront the secrets at the heart of the war and find in each other a searing passion, one that could save their world or destroy it. So there are definitely a lot of common tropes that I'm seeing. Again, we have the chosen one. We have hate to love. We have two people from like enemy kingdoms or something like that having to work together to build an alliance to like save the world essentially. And then of course they're going to fall in love and they find power together. And I'm going to be honest. And some of the synopsis of this sounds very overdone and very basic. There's nothing about the synopsis of this that truly jumps out to me. I feel a little bit hesitant just because I feel very, very burned by A Curse of Saints by Kate Dramas, which was probably one of the most basic generic and vague fantasy novels that I've ever read in my whole entire life. And when I read the synopsis of that book, I had the similar feelings to when reading the synopsis of this one. So I'm a little bit hesitant about this. Early, early reviews are somewhat good. It has a 4.06 rating out of 685 ratings. So not too terribly many ratings. This could be one to be on the lookout for though. Backtracking a little bit, I do have one that is actually apparently coming out on the 1st of October, which seems weird because the 1st is a Sunday and that's really unusual, but both Goodreads and Amazon say that this is released on the 1st, but that is These Still Black Waters by Christina McDonald. It says, after a violent home invasion, Neve McGuire returns with her daughter to Black Lake, her childhood summer home, hoping for a fresh start. But when the body of a young woman is found floating among the reeds in the lake behind her house, she fears she has made a horrible mistake. Neve is hiding secrets though. Detective Jess Lambert can tell. Recently back after her own personal tragedy, Jess knows what it's like to live with skeletons in your closet, and she's sure Neve has a few of her own. When another woman's body is found, Jess and Neve are forced to confront a horrible truth, because one thing is clear, the darkness of the past is waiting, and the secrets of Black Lake are only just beginning to surface. I have read a couple of other books by Christina McDonald, and I've enjoyed them to some extent. They have never been like anything mind-blowing or anything like that, but they are a good time and a pretty entertaining time as well. This sounds like it could be interesting, a combination of detective fiction, but with the perspective of somebody else in the story as well. I'm not entirely sure if this is one that I am going to pick up, but I did notice that it was coming out and I wanted to mention it here in case you are a fan of Christina McDonald. And like I said, 
said, this one says that it's coming out on the 1st of October. So take of that what you will. I actually only have one release to talk to you about that's coming out on the 10th and it's actually Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. This is actually her adult debut and it's one that I personally am interested in trying. I gave up on her young adult stuff years ago. I attempted to read the Mortal Instrument series and I DNF'd at book two and I could just couldn't really get into anything else that she was doing so I kind of gave up but I want to see what she can do in the adult realm. This says in the vibrant city state of Castellane the richest of nobles and the most debauched of criminals have one thing in common the constant search for wealth power and the next hedonistic thrill. Hell is an orphan stolen from the life he knew to become the sword catcher, the body double of a royal heir, Prince Connor Aurelian. He has been raised alongside the prince, trained in every aspect of combat and statecraft. He and Connor are close as brothers, but Kel knows he has one destiny, to die for Connor. No other future is possible. Lancaster is one of the Ashkar, a small community who still possesses magical abilities. By law, they must live behind walls in the city, but Lynn, a physician, ventures out to tend to the sick and dying of Castellane. Despite her skills, she cannot heal her best friend Marion without access to forbidden knowledge. After a failed assassination attempt brings Lynn and Kel together, they are drawn into the web of the mysterious ragpicker king, the criminal ruler of Castellane. Lane's underworld. He offers them what they want most, but as they descend into his world of intrigue and shadow, they discover a conspiracy of corruption that reaches from the darkest gutters of Castellane to the highest tower of its palaces. As long-kept secrets begin to unravel, they must ask themselves, is knowledge worth the price of betrayal? Can forbidden love bring down a kingdom? And will Lynn and Kel's discoveries plunge their nation into war and the world into chaos? So I'm actually really intrigued by the synopsis of this. It sounds like there could be a lot of political intrigue going on in here. It sounds like there could be a complex plot and maybe even a potential romance between Lynn and Kel, and I'm down for it. I've already pre-ordered a special edition. I I believe it was from Fairy Loot that's coming out with it and I already have it and as soon as it's in my hands I'm going to try to pick it up. I'm going to give Cassandra Clare a shot in the adult age range. So kind of excited about this one and I thought that you might be too. Another outlier and one that I'm only going to briefly mention because it is the fifth book in a series of companion romance novels is Hopeless by Elsie Silver. This is the fifth book in her Chestnut Spring series. This is one that I've only recently discovered. I read Flawless a few weeks ago and I enjoyed it and I do plan on continuing. This book follows Bo Eaton and if I remember correctly he is the younger brother of the main love interest from book one. So I am excited to see what kind of love story Bo gets and all of the other men in the Chestnut Springs series. I'm really excited to kind of dive in and I think I'm also going to be starting her Gold Rush Ranch series in October as well. So we'll see if I like that one as much. But either way I am excited about it and I know that there are a lot of you out there who are fans of Elsie Silver and the Chestnut Springs series and so I wanted to let you know that this one is coming out on the 13th in case you are interested. Moving on into the 17th we have another queer romance by Alexis Hall called 10 Things That Never Happened. Alexis Hall wrote I believe it was Boyfriend material and husband material and this is the start of what's either going to be a new series or at least a new companion novel series. It says Sam Becker loves or okay likes his job. Sure managing a bed and bath retailer isn't exactly glamorous but it's good work and he gets on well with the band of misfits who keep the store running. He could see himself being content here for the long haul. Too bad though that the owner is an infuriating git. Jonathan Force should never have hired Sam. It was a sentimental decision and Jonathan didn't get where he is by following his heart. Determined to set things right Jonathan orders Sam down to London for a difficult task only for a panicking Sam to trip, bump his head, and maybe accidentally imply he doesn't remember anything. Faking amnesia seemed like a good idea when Sam was afraid he was getting sacked, but now he has to deal with the reality of Jonathan's guilt, as well as the unsettling fact that his surly boss might have a softer side to him. There's an unexpected freedom in getting a second shot at a first impression, but as Sam and Jonathan grow closer, can Sam really bring himself to tell the truth, or will their future be built entirely on one impulsive lie? This sounds like a boss and employee relationship, but we have fake amnesia, but as he's growing closer to his boss and feelings are developing, he's wondering if he's going to tell the truth. I know that a lot of people are big fans of him, so I wanted to go ahead and mention that here and it is coming out on the 17th. And then it looks like I only have one more to talk to you about for the 17th and it's called The Sisterhood Secret History of Women in the CIA by Liza Mundy and I thought that, that it sounded really really fascinating. Upon its creation in 1947 the CIA instantly became one of the most important spy services in the world. Like every male dominated workplace in Eisenhower America the growing intelligence agency needed women to type memos, send messages, manipulate expense accounts, and keep secrets. Despite discrimination or even because of it these clerks and secretaries rose to become some of the shrewdest, toughest operatives the agency ever employed. Because women were seen as unimportant, they moved unnoticed on the streets of Bonn, Geneva, and Moscow, stealing secrets under the noses of the KGB. Back at headquarters, they built the CIA's critical archives, first by hand, then by computer. These women also battled institutional stereotyping and beat it. Men argued they alone could run spy rings, but the women proved they could be spy masters too. During the Cold War, women made critical contributions to U.S. intelligence, sometimes as officers, sometimes as unpaid spouses, working together as their numbers grew. The women also made unique sacrifices sacrifices, giving up marriage, children, even their own lives. They noticed things that the men at the top didn't see. In the final years of the 20th century, it was a close-knit network of female CIA analysts who warned about the rising threat of Al-Qaeda. After the 9-11 attacks, women rushed to join the fight as a new job targeter came to prominence. They showed that painstaking data analysis could be crucial to the post-9-11 national security landscape, an effort that culminated spectacularly in the CIA's successful efforts to track down and kill Osama bin Laden and later 
Ayman Al Zawahiri. With the same meticulous reporting and storytelling verb that she brought to her New York Times bestselling Code Girls, Liza Mundy has written an indispensable and sweeping history that reveals how women at the CIA ushered in the modern intelligence age. And that sounds absolutely phenomenal to me. This is kind of reminding me somewhat of the historical fiction that I read by Kate Quinn that typically features women doing remarkable things during World War II, such as code breaking and spying and things like that. And this is basically the real life version of some of that. And I am down for it. I've already added it to my TBR. I am super excited to kind of dig into this. So I'm really very intrigued to see what Liza Mundy is able to uncover in this story. And like I said, I've already added it to my TBR and it comes out on the 17th. Moving on into the 24th, I'm briefly going to mention that the third book in Stephanie Garber's Once Upon a Broken Heart series is coming out. It's called A Curse for True Love. I'm not going to say anything about the synopsis of the story because like I said, it is the third book in a, I think it's like a young adult fantasy series. And so I just wanted to let you know in case you were a fan of that series that it is coming out on the 24th. Also on the 24th, we have another interesting World War II historical fiction coming out called Sisters Under the Rising Sun by Heather Morris. In the midst of World War II, an English musician, Nora Chambers, places her eight-year-old daughter Sally on a ship leaving Singapore desperate to keep her safe from the Japanese army as they move down through the Pacific. Nora remains to care for her husband and elderly parents, knowing she may never see her child again. Sister Nessa James, a Welsh Australian nurse, has enlisted to attend to Allied troops. But as Singapore falls to the Japanese, she joins the terrified cargo of people, including the heartbroken Nora, crammed aboard the Vinerbrook merchant ship. Only two days later, they are bombarded from the air off the coast of Indonesia, and in a matter of hours, the Vinerbrook lies broken on the seabed. After surviving a brutal 24 hours in the sea, Nesta and Nora reach the beaches of a remote island, only to be captured by the Japanese and held in one of their notorious POW camps. The camps are places of starvation and brutality where diseases run rampant. Sisters in arms, Nora and Nesta fight side by side every day, helping whoever they can and discovering in themselves and each other extraordinary reserves of courage, resourcefulness, and determination. Sisters Under the Rising Sun is a story of women in war, a novel of sisterhood, bravery, and friendship in the darkest of circumstances. I actually really love the concept of this. This is actually about women who are captured and contained in POW camps, which sounds remarkable to me. And this is certainly one that is on my radar, again, coming out on the 24th. Also coming out on the 24th is the next sapphic romance from Ashley Harris. Blake called Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. This is the third in her Bright Falls series, which again, I believe is a series of companion novels. So you don't necessarily need to read one before the other. Even still, I don't necessarily want to say too terribly much about this, you know, just in case you're trying to read them in order and you don't really want to know what is coming next. So I don't want to give anything away, but I know that this is a very, very popular series. A lot of people love this romance series by Ashley Herring Blake. And so the next installment is coming out on the 24th, if you are interested. And the other nonfiction is actually the autobiography for Britney Spears called The Woman in Me. I know that this is one that has been eagerly anticipated by a lot of people, especially after all that she went through with her conservatory and things like that. There's just a brief blurb here. It says, The Woman in Me is a brave and astonishingly moving story about freedom, fame, motherhood, survival, faith, and hope. In June 2021, the whole world was listening as Britney Spears spoke in open court. The impact of sharing her voice, her truth, was undeniable and it changed the course of her life and the lives of countless others. The Woman in Me reveals for the first time her incredible journey and the strength at the core of one of the greatest performers in pop music history. Written with remarkable candor and humor, Spears' groundbreaking book illuminates the enduring power of music and love and the importance of a woman telling her own story on her own terms at last. I don't necessarily know if this is something that I would read because even though I consider myself somewhat invested in Britney Spears' story just because I have grown up with her, like I've grown up with her basically my entire life and I've kind of seen this journey that she's taken. And if there was any celebrity memoir that I would read, it would probably be hers. I'm not really a celebrity memoir person, but like I said, I do know that this has been eagerly awaited by a lot of people. And so this is certainly one that I know a lot of people would like to keep their eye on for the 24th. And the final book that I'm going to talk to you about today is actually the only Halloween release I have on here. It is called The Paleontologist by Luc Dumas. A haunted paleontologist returns to the museum where his sister was abducted years earlier and is faced with a terrifying and murderous spirit in this chilling novel from the author of A History of Fear. Curator of paleontology Dr. Simon Neely never expected to return to his Pennsylvania hometown, let alone the Hawthorne Museum of Natural History. He was just a boy when his six-year-old sister Morgan was abducted from the museum under his watch, and the guilt has haunted Simon ever since. After a recent breakup of the death of the aunt who raised him, Simon feels drawn back to the place where Morgan vanished in search of the bones they never found. But from the moment he arrives, things aren't what he expected. The Hawthorne is a crumbling ruin still closed amid the ongoing pandemic and plummeting towards financial catastrophe. Worse, Simon begins seeing and hearing things he can't explain. Strange animal sounds, bloody footprints that no living creature could have left, a prehistoric killer looming in the shadows of the museum. Terrified he's losing his grasp on reality, Simon turns to the handwritten research diaries of his predecessor and uncovers a blood-soaked mystery 150 million years in the making that could be the answer to everything. Are these 
these the ravings of a madman or is there something supernatural at play and what does this have to do with morgan's disappearance i just thought that that sounded really creepy kind of atmospheric you have a mystery at play with the disappearance of a young girl but you also have a paleontologist who thinks that he could be going mad because he's hearing and seeing things that shouldn't be there so this could definitely play on the supernatural i am not entirely sure it does say that it's for fans of simone st james here in the little blurb at the top and simone st james is almost always speculative in nature i don't know that one just sounded really intriguing and like i said it's the only october 31st release that we are going to talk about in this video so that was it guys those are all the new releases that i wanted to talk to you about in this video i know that it was somewhat shorter than my other new release videos but like i said i am not talking about any of the books that i featured in the book of the month prediction video and also i made a completely separate video of all of the holiday romances that are coming out between now and the end of the year and there were quite a few that are actually coming out in october so those probably would have been featured here as well if i had not done that separate video again i will be sure to link that holiday romance video and the october book of the month prediction video down below in case you were interested in watching any of those as usual if there are any other october releases that you feel are notable that i didn't mention here that you would love other people to know about please feel free to comment down below and include those in the comments let me know some of the releases that you are excited for in the month of october if you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me like a woman emoji in honor of the badass women of the cia because i am super excited about that book y'all and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already i aim to post one video a week sometimes two and i would sure love to connect with you in one of those other videos or on any of my other social media platforms i always leave links to my goodreads instagram and ig threads down below if you would love to connect with me there i would love to chat with you and until next time guys bye